episode of Tech Talk Travel. Uh, today's guests are Apaleo and the founders from Apaleo, Uli Pilau and Martin Reichenbach. And also joining us is Daniel Zelling from Open Smile. And today's episode is slightly different. We have four people in the show and we're going to be talking about Apaleo's, uh, we could say meteoric rise in the hotel industry space. Um, and uh, yeah, welcome to the show. It's great to have you with us. Thanks. Nice to be here. So let's, let's start by perhaps talking a little bit about your backgrounds. Uli, everyone is very familiar, I think, with your background. You're a, a very well-recognized person in our industry. Um, but Martin, you're perhaps more new to this space. Why don't, you, why don't we start with yourself and give us a bit of your background and how you found yourself coming into Apaleo and in the hotel industry. Sure. It's actually quite a long story. Um, I was studying computer science at once, uh, 10 years ago, and then I moved into consulting, uh, did a lot of pricing consulting for software firms, so I was already pretty close to SaaS industry. Um, but four years ago, I think it was, I met with one of the uh, guys of the former company um, of Uli, and um, we actually met at a Founder Institute event, and we were talking about you know, how software as a service pricing is actually very difficult and um, that was my specialty so actually we got um, basically in a, in a contractual relationship where I was consulting them on, on pricing for the old firm and well then we were working together two years me as a freelancer them growing um, and actually at some point there was just the event where we thought you know can't we bring this together and the opportunity arose like two years ago when we had the chance to found up a Leo um, and I mean, I'm, I'm not the only one, Ali is not you know, the only one, we're like 11 founders from the beginning. In the meanwhile, we get up to 14 founders, so it's quite, a, quite an impressive group that we brought together. And well, since four years then, I'm doing hospitality um, in a broader way, and now I was also getting involved with the product, with the property management system. Um, to bring this to life in some parts, I also wrote some lines of code, and now I'm uh, mainly on the market side and selling the product. Okay, great, great. And Uli, yourself, obviously, before Apollo <coughs> with Hetris, and before Hetris Ideas, and before Ideas Micros. Um, as I said before, you've been around a long time. Why don't you give us a bit of a, a more of an info? Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm coming originally from the hotel industry, so I've been doing hotels for um, quite a while. That's where I origin from. Um, and then I joined the Fidelio team in, uh, in Munich when we just started the company. I was one of the first employees there and then spent 10 years growing Fidelio, which was a very exciting time. Actually, it was not, as, it was not called startup because the word startup didn't exist at the time, but it really was a startup. It was a true software startup in very exciting times. Um, and slight correction, I actually never worked for Micros. I always, almost worked, always worked for Fidelio. And then um, when it became Micros, uh, pretty much the old management and team left um, soon afterwards. And then I did 10 years of ideas, establishing ideas worldwide, and then Hetras. So it's kind of the cycles I'm going through. Yeah, yeah. So, so you have a lot of experience with the startup. Culture, yeah, right? yeah, actually I like startups. Yeah. I'm, I'm not somebody to work in big organizations um, and our old company when we sold it in 2016, um, obviously we said um, it's a big company we are joining now um, and, and would that be an option? But it never was an option for us. We yeah. said we had a clear vision and idea of what we wanted to do next yeah. um, and that's why we started Apaleo at the time. Okay. So obviously then when you say you had a clear vision of what you wanted to do next, Apaleo or the concept of Apaleo has perhaps been with you for a while. Is that fair yeah. to say? That's very fair to say. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think when we came to a point with Headfrust where we were growing worldwide and getting more clients and chains on board, um, we also saw the limitations of what we are doing at the time. So the idea and vision grew, um, and if we wouldn't have sold Hetras, we would have most probably started with Hetras, a new era of technology, um, doing the same thing we are doing at Apaleo now, because mm -hmm. it's very unique in its concept and the platform, um, very different from everybody else mm -hmm. who's on the market. Yeah, I want, I want to dig into that a little bit later, because it's, it's not just a PMS system, and I, yeah. I think for the audience, I'd like to really define um, what that means from your perspective as, as founders of, of Apaleo. But before we get there, I'd like to maybe just start with a little bit about the history of the company. I know it's very short. You started last year, 2017. 
Why don't you talk us through perhaps the embryonic stage? If you're not, well, sure. I'd say you're past embryo stage, but mm -hmm. talk us through that stage and um, what your footprint looks like today. Okay. So how's that looked? How's the progress been for you? Yeah, so the official founding date was January 2017. Um, so we're in the market um, or there as a company for one and a half years now, a bit more. Um, we were actually heavily into programming, developing a product in the first nine months. Um, and Fawcett was always the plan to go live with the ITB in 2018, mm -hmm. so actually six months ago. Um, but we managed to somehow uh, get together the product and uh, get the first pilot customers way before. So we started with the first pilot nine months into programming. Um, and we had some time to kind of adapt the product, get it uh, a bit further to, to be scalable and so on. So we were working with these two pilot customers from October 2017. Um, for half a year, we were getting the integrations done and so on, um, getting the first apps uh, live on Apaleo. Um, and from ITB 2018, we started actually selling and going out to the market. And I mean, by now, six months into selling, we have around 100 productive um, properties on the platform, um, which are, you know, there's test customers and there's live, live customers and so on. Um, and in the meanwhile, we also grew this concept of an app store where we always thought there has to be something different, this old integration game we should overcome and we, we should build something that is actually a product. So this was the second major step also coming with ITB um, this year. And by now I think we're in five or six countries. Um, so we also made it happen, not just the chain versus individual properties, but also the business of um, you know internationalization from a product perspective. Um, I think we, we got a far away in the you know in the last one and a half years. And I, so, and I think yeah. the same applies actually when you look at the type of customers we have because what we wanted to show is that the Apaleo concept, the PMS, the platform works with different types of hotels. Mm -hmm. And actually this is today already the case. I mean we are not in all markets yet, but we for <coughs> example we have hotels which are really basic traditional hotels. 50, 50 rooms, traditional reservation, reception, check-in, check-out, as we have known it forever. But on the other hand, we have customers that are really fully automated hotels. So we have actually one chain already with a number of hotels which operate entirely staffless hotels. So mm -hmm. if you have no employees at hotel level, that obviously means that the platform behind needs to support the full automation in all ways. So the mobile guest journey for those hotel groups is obviously the key. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a concept we see more and more often. Like recently we did the mm -hmm. interview with Martin Stockburger from Concept mm -hmm. Hotel, so that's a similar model yep. with one employee per hotel. Mm -hmm. um, for the ones that consider uh, Apaleo as a pure PMS company out there, I would like to you guys to dive a little bit deeper into like what is the difference between a classic PMS provider out there and what is Apaleo more towards the marketplace? Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps let me just attack yeah. on to that, let's call it next generation, if you like, yeah, PMS. Even better. Um, because I, I'm curious, because you've got a, a vast experience in PMS. I think you, you, you know that bit, very, yes. very well. <laughs> so what, what is it that you're doing now? Sorry to, to no. over, overtake, but same I think same. it sort of tacks onto it. What, what are you doing with Apple now that makes it this next gen version of a PMS so mm -hmm. that it's, it's catering for what is now a very diverse landscape of, of customers? and hotel users? So, I mean, when you look at the history of PMSs, we all know the traditional PMSs, which today we would call legacy PMSs. Mm. I mean, those are the ones that worked on premise, um, and at some point, everybody was shouting, we need cloud systems. So what these vendors did is, they took their old technology, put it in hosted data centers, and then called it cloud software. Yeah. This is not the same thing. And then the first um, two native cloud PMSs came onto the market, such as Muse or Stay in Touch, uh, some others, um, which are really nat were nat native cloud PMSs mm -hmm. and Hetras as well. But those were actually more or less copies of the old on-premise PMSs, um, causing the same issues, um, some of the same problems you found with the old PMSs you have with those cloud PMSs. And um, they were started to be developed like 
five, six, seven years ago. I mean, Hetros is eight years ago, uh, has been founded. Um, uh, news, when you look at it, is maybe six years old or seven years old. Simia is stay in touch. Um, and so the tools and technologies have radically changed over those years. And today, what's available when you start a new technology is actually completely different. Mm -hmm. So what we define as the next gen, we had something completely different in mind. And Martin, you want to continue from here? Sure. So I think um, there, it's not just the hotel industry that's going that way, right? You, you look at uh, the CRM landscape where you had on-premise systems and then Salesforce came along and then HubSpot came along. And I think it's a, quite a good comparison because the old systems always needed a lot of setup efforts. You always had a project around it. You had the project for setting up the system. You had the project for integration. Um, you had the project for training stuff. And this is actually what we're trying to overcome and which we already see succeeding in, uh, in a lot of cases mm -hmm. that this, this effort of, of setting up such a system becomes much lower from a cost perspective but also from a timing perspective. So this is one of the, one of the big changes we see and of course um, there's a lot of technical, uh, technological improvements which uh, are required to do that. So one is that we have an open API which means we have a um, all the functionality, all the data, everything available through, a, through an interface from day one. Um, so this is a radical new approach you call in the industry API first, but it just means that you can um, harvest all the data from the PMS, use it, um, or also trigger things, trigger actions inside the PMS, not just through a user interface, but um, from um, two-way integrations or two-way interfaces from uh, from that point onwards. And, and essentially everybody claims to have API today. Um, they all pretty much say the same thing. But what's so different is that, and we did the same thing at Hetras, we built the PMS first and then we built the API layer on, on top mm. of PMS, on top of the Hetras PMS. And that restricts you always to what is in the PMS. But when you do an API first approach, it's actually the other way around. So imagine our Apaleo user interface, the PMS user interface, is using the same public API as every other app and every other, other partner we have on board. And what that means is that we cannot put one single feature or functionality into the PMS before putting it into the API, into the platform with the API on top of it. And that drives you, if you do something new, put it in the API so you can use it in the PMS, but at the same time, from the same very moment, it's available to everybody else out there to be yeah. used. And that is radically different from everybody else um, that has done it before. In contrast to the good old oxys which we saw. With. Ab ab absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we, we are not saying anything bad about no, the, the way. former PMSs. They had their place in the markets. But I think the, the markets are getting ready for a disruption because it cannot continue the old way. Yeah. There has to be a new way of adap adapting technology in the mm -hmm. hotel industry. And that's what drives us today. I find it kind of interesting that you guys did not even consider to build your own uh, booking engine in, in that overall mm -hmm. context, being very open and having your API. And, so, and I think that could be interesting to dive into just as an example of yeah. your overall approach. Yeah. So essentially, we are taking that concept a step further. I mean, mm -hmm. software as a service, PMS as a service has been, or cloud PMSs have been around a little bit. But actually, we are doing something else. We are doing really platform as a service. Mm -hmm. And when you do a platform um, in the way we do it, you actually should stay away from building any of the components that mm -hmm. are out there. So our approach is really to say, you know, we are good in the platform idea and, and what a core PMS needs to have, but everything else, there are better specialists than mm -hmm. us out in the world. So we want to motivate as many app providers and partners to go on and attach their apps to our platform through mm -hmm. the public API, but they are the specialists in IBE, CRM, business intelligence, and whatever you have around. Um, and I think that's also a very much a change from the uh, PMS, current PMS monolithic systems yeah. in the world, because they want to provide everything. Yes. When you go there the and say, I'm a, I'm a new ch a chain or a new hotel, and I want to use your PMS, the answer you get is, yes, you can have the PMS, and here's our whatever, booking engine, BI, CRM, yeah. whatever mm -hmm. it is. And uh, as soon as you want to go outside and choose a different app, which actually might be better, 
the guys tell you, yeah, but that's an interface project and it takes you an interface license, certification, mm. development, and then you end up with a hurdle like that of why you can't use that app. Mm. And we want to go radically the different way. So for us, it's we provide the platform and the PMS user interface, and we come back to this because we have other ideas on PMS user interface, actually, which might be a little bit surprising to everybody, but we don't want to build those components. Mm -hmm. and I think the IBE is a really good example because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, there are many IBEs out there, some converting good, some converting not that good, um, but actually the IBE was a, was a, an app uh, which was developed uh, solely for Apple Hero in the first place, um, which means that having all this open API allows also people to build custom apps um, and IBEs which are running on Apaleo which is obviously becoming more attractive the more mm -hmm. traction we receive um, and then you have the traditional let's call it traditional IBEs which were there before which do an integration project um, the benefit of having a custom IBE just to go to this example is that you don't really have to replicate any data so it means uh, you don't have to pull the availabilities and rates and inventory but you can just use the same services as on the PMS so you have real-time availability of uh, your inventory and your pricing mm -hmm. um, so you don't have this you know uh, really um, foolish time in between of update periods and so on so there are some benefits of course also using the API in the first place um, uh, I think especially uh, being in the technology education platform and, and videos and all that and, and the kind of the education which we provide to the market and try to provide, um, I think it's really key and important to make this a little bit comparable as well for the people out there. So there's uh, obviously several marketplaces out there and Booking Suite is just bringing that in different countries and Impala we just did an interview with Ben and uh, Snapshot is out there. Mm -hmm. So. Can you help the, the listeners and the watchers out there uh, following Tech Talk Travel uh, to identify what is the differences and where you position yourselves in comparison to those players? Mm -hmm. Sure. So there, I think it's, it's uh, not just one category. There's multiple mm -hmm. categories. You mentioned some. You mentioned the API middleware. Mm -hmm. It basically collects multiple APIs. So let's say you have a... You have multiple properties running on different PMSs. You have one on Protel and you have one on Guestline. And you want to somehow extract the data and allow a third party application to, um, to use this data, to read it, to write things back and so on. Then you would use an, a middleware to set on top, which is understanding both Guestline and Protel's data structures um, and has an interface there. And then basically this app can access these specific um, functions, actions, whatsoever. So the problem is, of course, that the more PMSs you have, the more complex it gets. Um, so these guys were solving this problem of having multiple legacy PMSs mm -hmm. and connecting them. Um, of course, this comes at a cost because the hotelier is paying for multiple integrations on multiple points, both at the, at the middleware as well as uh, for the PMS integrations. And um, so it's a, it's a good in-between and it's a very hard project or it's a very hard product to, to build as well as to, to uh, get successful. And then you have uh, marketplaces, let's call it data platforms, where you actually collect all the data from all the multiple players. Mm -hmm. What is missing here from our perspective when you think about a PMS as a, as a base is that you don't understand what this data means. So you don't have this business logic of doing a check-in, you don't know what is triggering what. So it's it's a great place to do BI, to do analytics, but you, it's not a good place to do operations. So you need a PMS in the, in the next step, somehow connected to it, which can also use this data or gives data to that. Um, did we have a third category? No, I think that I think these are the main and, and I think the yeah. business logic in, in, the, in the platform is key, absolutely key to that, because mm -hmm. imagine Whatever we build in the platform, and we're handling things like um, reservations, inventory, pricing, payment, um, accounting transactions, a few of those things, they are also all available via the public API. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a data point you call via our public API, it's really a function, a feature, and, and you can use Im immediately this feature. So imagine you have a whatever, a mobile check-in guest uh, app 
and you want to use that app against the platform of Apaleo uh, to do mobile, to offer mobile check-in, mobile booking, mobile keys, and all of that. So all of the functions we have built in the platform as a check-in is available to everybody else uh, mm. with all of the data that's there because we use it in our own user interface PMS as well and that gives you a huge advantage of doing those integrations very quickly very fast um, and at no cost there is no cost to it and we will never we will never charge for integrations we'll never charge interface fees we'll never charge setup or configuration fees so the world is completely different but mm -hmm. i think martin is right if you have those data aggregation platforms that's one thing and they have their place obviously um, uh, but it's completely different from what we do in that world right right so what you're saying really is that the the concept that you're offering to the end user is that all the integrations and interfaces that uh, Apple AI offer through the platform are feeless. There is no charge. Absolutely. Essentially. Yeah. So yeah. from from the third party's perspective, from the third party partner, the other mm -hmm. the other services that are plugging into that, um, where's the commercial side work for them? If we can just tap tap on that, because there obviously needs to be a benefit for them as well. Of mm -hmm. course, there's a benefit being there and having a presence there. Mm -hmm. But how does if you can speak about that, how does the commercialization of that work? Sure. Between I you? mean, we already have today tons of hotels and groups that are coming to our website. They are not all Apaleo users yet, mm -hmm. but what they do is they look at our concept. They typically they like it very much. But actually, what they do is they go to the shop and look around there mm -hmm. and start purchasing or, or considering apps that are on the shop um, right now. And today, we since we launched it on ITB, we already have 50 apps, I think, in the store, and we have another 50 in the waiting uh, on the waiting list to come on board. Mm -hmm. And the concept is really that um, the, the app providers will benefit from being uh, available in the store. I mean, people go there, they look at the categories, say, you know, here's a choice of three CRMs, which is the best one that that fits for my purposes. And even if they don't switch to Apaleo immediately or use our PMS now, they can actually still uh, acquire those those apps and, and implement them and use them with their current systems. It might not be as seamless as with Apaleo, but actually the app providers do get some benefits out of that today. Right. And and I think what is important is to understand that those, um, those apps that can be built on top of Apaleo, there's really no end to it. And what I mean with that, we have built the hotel PMS user interface because we needed to convert the first customers from uh, from the legacy PMSs. Mm. But there are actually other PMSs which people could create on top of Apaleo. Imagine um, you have a long stay apartment uh, business or you have a hostel business or whatever other business around an accommodation. People could go there and build their own user interface based upon the Apaleo platform. And that is very unique because mm. what we did mm. in our backend we did not only consider the traditional way of how to run a hotel, so overnight and day use, and then in terms of uh, the other components, the, uh, there are other things to inventory which are important, um, but we, we already went there and said you could actually sell any good you or set up and sell any good you want on the Apaleo platform, mm -hmm. so not only hotel rooms, but anything around, you could set up as a unit could have put a price to it. And then in the inventory, you could set it up as being sold overnight or day use. We need this for the hotels, but actually by the minute. Mm -hmm. we, we are down to time slices in the platform today. So if you imagine a third party user interface or app that wants to build a user interface on top of Apaleo, they could specialize in certain areas which we don't cover today. Mm -hmm. So it's not only the traditional categories like CRM, business intelligence, whatever you have, but it's also other new things around which are sitting on top of the platform then. Mm. Interesting. So what, hotels by night could go ahead and build a PMS for their... Hotels by day, you mean? Hotels by day, yeah. sorry. <laughs> hotels so by day. Let, let yeah. me give you an example, a yeah. specific example, because I always like doing examples. Um, we, we were approached by a VC company that was interested in us. And by chance, this VC company has a subsidiary which is doing actually accommodation business. What they do is they buy in different cities, right now in Germany, but soon internationally, they buy apartments and then sell those apartments 
on Airbnb and other channels. And they came to us and said, you know, we couldn't find anything that would fit our purposes. Can't we use your platform? And we said, you know, try it out. We, we don't know. You have the platform, you have the access, here's the API, do whatever you want. And actually they today have all of their rooms. There are not too many, but they mm -hmm. have all of their rooms um, on Apaleo and are selling it on the different channels. And they, they handle the whole operations with that system. And we had a call from them last week or so where, where somebody was on the phone and said, how did you add another property to, 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 to the platform? And they said, oh, we just did it. We knew how to do it. We didn't need your help. So, and this is what we need to come to now is, um, that's a major difference on how we can set up customers today, how we can set up hotels, how fast, how easy, actually mm. they can do it themselves. And that's where we want to come to. Yeah, actually that takes me to another question I wanted to ask you, if you could talk us through the onboarding experience for the, the hotelier, for the user, what, what, what does that look like for them? And does it vary based on the type of property that they may be? So for example, if they're a smaller B&B with 10 rooms, or they're a boutique hotel with 50, or, or even a large, part of a larger chain of yeah. 100, 150, 200 rooms. Does yeah. it change at all and, and so it, what does it look like? Yeah, there, there are multiple starting points. I mean, we have a typical sales cycle of a year plus in, in hotels um, and, and somehow um, the traditional approach scaling up Aleo is just not good enough. Mm. Um, so basically one of, the, one of the things that we started a couple of months ago was actually to think about a better way to onboard the hotels. And the starting point is, and it sounds really simple, you just give them a demo, show them the product, and then the next step, um, they get a free trial account and they can play with it. And we support them in actually setting up their own hotel structurally, um, up until they have the first reservations, check a guest in and so on. Um, and at some point, on that journey, there are multiple steps. You have the demo, you have the free trial, then you have to think about how does your technology stack work? Like, what do you need next to the PMS? Mm -hmm. Typically, we start with a really lean approach where we say you need a PMS, you need to somehow get your bookings in, you need to somehow set prices, which we do as well, or which we allow for at least, um, and you have to get your payments. So these are kind of core uh, functionalities uh, that we see and where we also have applications that support it, of course. Um, and then in the next step, they, of course, always have the question, so how do I get the data? If I have an existing business, how do I get the data from the other systems? So we have a migration API, which allows for importing this data and know kind of what are the reservations that are on the books. I mean, we're always a bit puzzled when we hear from other examples in the industry that, you know, you type in your 400 reservations and technically for us, it's really simple to do that. So that's why we also offer it. And then in the last step, um, of course, it's the go live of the property. And this one is actually not done by sales, but it's done by an onboarding team. So it's also a different entity, a different department in our company. Um, one is the sales department, which basically establishes first contact and gets the uh, hotels into the demo and then into the onboarding process. And uh, this process we have established now with probably 15, 20 properties which already went through and went live. Mm. So uh, we see that it works and of course mm. this one can uh, optimize along the way. Um, but we can see that we can serve multiple countries, we can serve the UK, we can serve Germany, German speaking countries and now we also have a Spanish speaking person so she already brings in the first Spanish uh, guys into the onboarding process. Okay. What would and, be, and, sorry. and what is important is that actually a lot of these hotels Martin talks about today we never saw in, in person. So that means that from the very first contact until go live actually right. you can do everything remote or right. they can do it themselves mm. to a big extent yeah. and that's actually the point where we want to come from i mean if you talk about the big picture what we have in mind is that you can use a pms and surrounding apps like you use your iphone yeah. so you have a platform which is a paleo and then you just go ahead and automatically can say I want to test this app now for CRM, this app for this case, this app for this case and you activate those and they are automatically linked to the to the platform um, and then you start working with them and if you, after some time you say you know there's a better app or I might want to test another app it should be as easy to switch that app to, mm -hmm. a, to a different app. So make it real simple and straightforward um, and get rid of all of these immense costs to start such a project. It's ridiculous. Yeah, That's yeah. not the world 
world of yeah. today anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You asked about the, the type of hotels that we have in this yep. process, right? So we actually see chains up to 10, 20 properties mm -hmm. starting this. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of individuals, of course, as you can imagine, some of them doing it themselves, just starting with the free trial themselves and then at some point along the way they need some help. Mm. Um, but we see a lot, or a broad range of, of hotels. It's not the Marriott's, it's not the Hilton's no, yet. But, no, no, uh, is that Is that part of your aspiration to get to that level? I mean, talking about the big picture and the vision, yes, we have yeah. started the company with the idea of becoming the next generation provider for PMS and platform for the hotel industry. Yeah. So yeah. definitely Oracle, we want to attack. Uh, there's more to that, we know that, um, but, but we are going after the hotel chains um, from the current, uh, which the current vendors have today. Yeah, yeah. Because we think it can be done easier, faster, quicker, mm -hmm. better, at less cost. And there are a lot of things to that. So yes, that's mm -hmm. the vision mm -hmm. and the idea. But at the same time, that explains as well why, how we have started up Aveo. I mean, it's not a small software company as such as you would know a startup company, typical startup company. We have uh, 20 people now. We are growing to 30 next year. We, our partners, friends and ourselves, we have invested lots of money into the company um, now. And it's fine what we are building and it's a great difference in terms of platform but what we have in mind where we want to be in three, four, five years from now and how we want to get worldwide and we have very clear ideas of um, about that. We have some very good companies behind us backing us up so the funding is important. I mean the, mm. the ex-CIO of Hilton gave at some point uh, and uh, an idea when he told me a few years ago, a good friend of mine, he said, you know, in order to build a PMS today, which can be installed, implemented worldwide, you need to invest 20 million euros. Yeah, yeah. And actually, we think that today it's a little bit faster and easier and quicker. But when you think about the big picture with the platform, the API first approach, mm -hmm. the, the PMS and all the apps, mm -hmm. it's certainly an amount um, you will need to calculate, yeah. if not more. Yeah.